Hi, I'm Steve Jones from Redgate Software and SQL Server Central, and I want to show you how SQL Prompt can make your coding much, much easier. One of the things that I do often is I want to test some piece of code before I actually implement my database. And I'm sure all of you do the similar things where, you know, I might declare some variables, I might run some SQL query, I might add some checks in there to see if my code actually does what I expect it to do and if it works. Certainly I want to implement some testing around this, but for now, let's say that this code works the way I want it to work and I want to turn it into a store procedure. SQL prompt makes this really easy. Certainly I could come up to the top here and add a few lines and say, you know, create procedure, update password as begin, all right? I could do this and I could go down to the end and put the end there and I could continue to edit all this code, but that's kind of a cumbersome way to do it and certainly what I'll find is I'll make lots of mistakes while I'm doing it and it's, it's a little bit slow. So let's see how SQL prompt can make this much easier for me. One of the things that I can do is I can grab this section of code, which is an update. And I typically want to wrap this in a try catch statement. So you'll notice SQL prompt, it gives me this little window here. Once I've selected code, if I hit control, what I'll actually do is get a little prompt drop down with that text selected. And I've got a number of snippets here, but the one I want to use is this try catch fragment. And when I do that, you'll notice that my update statement is now wrapped in the try block and my cursor is down in the catch block where I can begin in any other code. Now I've got an error handler code that I want to add here as well. And I'll say this was a, a password change error of some sort if this doesn't work. And I can put this together. Now, the way I had those two snippets work is that in my snippet manager, SQL prompt, I actually have the try catch block. This is the default try catch block. And if you'll notice in this code, what we've done is the selected text token allows me to take any of the text that I've selected and it will drop it inside of the snippet after I hit enter. And then of course I have the cursor snippet, which drops my cursor there. That's pretty handy. That's pretty neat, but I'm not done yet. I've got this code, but it's not yet a stored procedure. So how can I do this? Well, certainly I could select all this text. And if you'll notice, I collect, I have a begin end block, but I don't want a begin end block. I actually want my CP store procedure block here. So if I type CP and hit tab, you notice right away, I get a store procedure. My procedure name is highlighted. So let's change that to update password. I'll hit tab and I'll drop down to the very bottom where I have my security items as part of the snippet. In this case, I know I have a web users role that I want to use. And when I hit tab again, I immediately go to the notes section. Uh, so let's say initial procedure from inline code. Assume I maybe took this code out of a inline store procedure or inline code in an application or somewhere else. I can put this here. Now I'm not quite done. There's a little bit of editing to do. I can take these variables that I had up here and I'll remove the declare. I'll remove the semicolon. Let's reformat this code. And now you'll see I've got a store procedure that's put together with my parameters. Uh, I've got initial code. You'll notice that my name and date were actually added here. My try catch block is very quickly done. I have put all this done here at the bottom with this store procedure. Actually, in this case, I want to return a negative one. So we'll do that. Return zero at the end. I've got my security. How did this last block work with this create procedure? Well, that's another snippet that I've edited. In this case, I made it a custom one. I'll type CP and go right to that stored procedure snippet. You'll notice in here, what I've done is a few things. Number one, I did create procedure. And then I created my own token. In fact, I used a placeholder by putting whatever name I wanted inside of dollar signs, it adds it as a placeholder. I then included the date and the user account automatically here. My selected text gets dropped there. And then my other placeholders are back down here. You'll notice the procedure name automatically gets propagated in two places and the role name is propagated there. How did this work by itself? Well, I can say CP and I'll go my proc and I know I have the web users there. You'll notice my proc is down here. The date, my name is already there and I could begin coding right here. Hopefully it's helped you understand how SQL prompt can make create and store procedures much easier, especially with the snippet manager. I'm Steve Jones from Redgate Software and SQL Server Central.